I found an interesting setup for the safety circuit for a motor starter. I wanted to show you guys. This is the safety relay. It's a double pull, double throw, and it's using the 120 volt coil. So this is activated by 120 volt. This is the fan start stop relay, and it's activated by 24 volt from the G terminal, from the signal coming from the G terminal on the thermostat. And then this is our control transformer that supplies the 24 volts. 120 volts is coming from the motor starter to supply power to the line side of the control transformer. 120, that same 120 volts also supplies power to the 120 volt coil of the safety relay and the neutral to this coil is broken by the motor starter overload. So when the motor pulls too many amps, the overload will disconnect and the neutral to this will go away and turn this relay off. So the other pole, so that's the coil. So this has two poles. Um, one of the poles, normally open contact, breaks the G call going to the fan relay coil. The other pole breaks 120 volts, which goes to the normally open on the load side of this relay. So... Not only does it break the signal to this relay, but it also breaks the power supply to this relay. So this relay can do nothing when this safety relay is disengaged. And I thought that was really interesting. Okay, so I'd also like to tell you about how to check a transformer uh, to see if it has failed. So what happened was we accidentally hooked the G-call into... Um, the load side and of this transformer. And so whenever G was called, it actually went through a normally open contact and was fed back to uh, common of this transformer. So basically we shorted power in common by accident because we wired it wrong. And when that happened, a fuse blew in the motor starter. Uh, you would expect this low voltage fuse to blow, but um, I guess this transformer pulled too many amps and the fuse in the motor starter was kind of small and uh, it burnt very quickly. So I wanted to know, when I found the burnt fuse, I wanted to know if this transformer was still good. I didn't have another fuse on me. And I wanted to do some testing, so I, I decided I wanted to bypass the fuse with a, with a pair of jumpers. So that's a dangerous thing to do because you can damage other things in the circuit. And so before installing my jumpers, I wanted to be sure that this transformer was still good and that it would not um, damage the transformer that was supplying the, the 120 volts. And the way I did that was I disconnected both the line side coil and the load side coil so that uh, it was totally disconnected from the circuit. And then I took my multimeter and I checked continuity on the low side coil and the high side coil. And both of them had uh, no resistance. And so I figured it was probably still good and that it would be safe to um, bypass that fuse and uh, put power back on. So this is the motor starter. It's got a handoff auto switch and it has a transformer built in where it's pulling in um, probably 480. I'm pretty sure it pulls off of two legs two legs of 277 and it's going to give you 480 and uh, so the 480 powers that transformer on the line side and on the load side 120 comes out so this is where that fuse was that blew 
whenever we had trouble at the other transformer. So I wanted to be sure that the other transformer was still good before I bypassed this fuse. This is where the overload is built in for the motor starter. So here's what this circuit looks like on paper. We have the transformer in the motor starter, which is taking in 480 volts and stepping it down to 120. That 120 comes down to one of the poles of the safety relay. And if the safety relay is energized, it is fed through to the pole of the fan relay. And when the fan relay is called, it will supply that 120 volts to the motor starter coil. And on the other side of the motor starter coil, you have neutral, which is that same neutral there. Neutral from the motor starter goes through the overload of the motor starter. And if the overload is happy, uh, the neutral will be supplied to the coil side of the safety relay. And the other side of the coil is connected to 120 constantly. So this will be energized as long as the overload uh, is not tripped. The first pole of the safety relay gets G from the thermostat, 24 volts from the thermostat, and feeds it to the fan relay. And the fan relay gets its common from common of the transformer. So if the safety relay trips, if the overload trips, it will de-energize the coil, which will do two things. It will break a G call to the fan relay, and it will also break the 120 volts that goes through the switching side or the load side of that fan relay. I just thought it was interesting because... Um, it breaks it in two places, both on the high side and the low side, which uh, you don't see very often. It's kind of redundant. So to check the control transformer, I disconnected both hot and neutral, and, um, and then also the same power in common on the low voltage side. And I put my multimeter here and here, checking for continuity to make sure that this coil was still intact and again, the same thing here and here to make sure that this coil was still intact. And it was. So the coil, the transformer was still healthy. And so I was confident to bypass that fuse temporarily for testing purposes. That fuse is in place to protect. See, here it is. That fuse is in place to protect the 480 to 120 step down transformer. And that's definitely one you don't want to blow. It's going to be expensive you damage that.